Hi there, thank you so much for making your heart health a priority and taking the time to watch this video. My name is Nikki Dent and I'm the CEO of Heart Research Australia. We're a national not-for-profit organisation that funds first stage research into the prevention, diagnosis and treatment of heart disease. And sadly, that's Australia's leading cause of death. In addition to funding life-saving research, we aim to share vital information with the community to help reduce the devastating impact that heart disease has on families and our community. There are four main things we're aiming to cover off with you in this video. One is the warning signs and symptoms of a heart attack and what to do if these arise. The impact of experiencing menopause on your heart health and how to stay heart healthy by following the four M's approach. Also sharing your medical history with your current GP, including your obstetric history and getting a heart health check if you're over the age of 45 or 30 years for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Please note, whilst this content has been provided by cardiologists, it is always best to talk to your local GP about any specific issues you may be experiencing and they can refer you to a cardiologist near you. We hope you find this information helpful and don't forget to sign up to our Heart Health Club to hear regular information like this from our heart health experts. Thank you so much. Every 10 minutes, an Australian has a heart attack. That's roughly 54,000 Australians every year. If you thought yes, but that only happens to men, you wouldn't be the only one. Only one fifth of Australian women correctly identify heart-related issues to be one of their leading causes of death. Yes, more men do have more heart attacks than women. However, women are more likely to die of a heart attack. Unfortunately, many women are still unaware of the risk that cardiovascular disease poses to their health and have minimal knowledge about what heart attack symptoms are or what to do if they experience them. So, why is it that women are more likely to die from a heart attack? Well, there are a few reasons for this. Firstly, women tend to develop symptoms of heart disease at a later stage of the illness than men. Their symptoms are often more complex, not just chest pain. Some diagnostic tests for heart disease are less accurate in women than in men. Because of some less specific symptoms, women are less likely to seek help quickly. The longer that it takes for women to be able to come and seek medical treatment, the more likely they are to have adverse effects. Physicians can also underestimate cardiovascular disease in women, which can influence and delay their diagnosis and treatment. So what actually is a heart attack and how do you know if you're having one? Well, a heart attack most commonly occurs when a narrowing in a heart artery suddenly becomes blocked, stopping the flow of blood to the heart. The longer it takes for someone to seek medical treatment for a heart attack, the more damage that is done to the heart muscle. On a cellular level, once that muscle cell has died, the damage is irreparable. That's why it's so important to know what to do in case of a heart attack. There are two common mistakes that people make when it comes to heart attacks. The first, assuming that the symptoms are the same for everyone. And the second, dismissing the symptoms, just thinking they'll go away. Many people assume that heart attacks are just like they are in the movies. Sudden, intense pain in the chest and then collapsing. In reality though, the signs can be less, much less obvious and they can vary between individuals, particularly between men and women. We have a separate video for men, so feel free to share that one with any men in your life. While chest pain is a classic symptom of heart attack, other symptoms can occur in addition to or instead of chest pain. Some of these symptoms are a dull pain or chest tightness, heaviness or discomfort that becomes more severe and doesn't go away, jaw and neck pain, severe pain that's often described as crushing, nausea or feeling sick in the stomach, fainting, sweating, pain in the shoulder or arms, similar sensations to heartburn, sudden difficulty breathing, or a sudden overwhelming feeling of fatigue or weakness. If you or someone around you experiences any of these symptoms or in combination for more than a few minutes, regard this as an emergency. Rather than going to a doctor's clinic, take these simple steps. Dial triple zero in Australia, ask for an ambulance, report a possible heart attack. Give the person an aspirin if you have any, unless they've been advised not to take this particular medication. Make sure they rest quietly while you wait for transport or an ambulance. And if an ambulance is not readily available, for example, in some regional areas, quickly notify the nearest hospital, health clinic, or the person's usual doctor for advice. 
It's important to note that heart disease can occur in women at any age. However, when women experience menopause and their oestrogen levels begin to fall, the risk increases significantly. So Ashley, what does oestrogen do for women's heart health? Oestrogen does a lot of things for women's heart. Um, one of the wonderful things it does for women is it helps protect against cardiovascular disease. It makes women less likely to have plaque in the arteries surrounding the heart or have this plaque rupture or burst. It is thought that women's natural oestrogen helps protect their heart from heart disease by supporting the flexibility of blood vessels and their arteries, enabling them to best support blood flow. This helps the blood vessels in the body stay stable and function well. Oestrogen also helps good cholesterol stay high and bad cholesterol stay low, and it has beneficial effects on sugar regulation and insulin. The withdrawal of oestrogen after menopause takes you back to the standard risk of cardiovascular disease. Around 10 years after a woman has undergone menopause, they have an accelerated cardiovascular disease profile where they end up having the same risk as men. So just to be clear, menopause doesn't cause cardiovascular disease? No, definitely not. Menopause doesn't cause cardiovascular disease, but it's the changes associated with menopause, with the withdrawal of oestrogen and the changes in the body that enhances the risk of cardiovascular disease at that time. So what, with that in mind, um, what can women do as a plan before, during and after menopause? That's a great question. So another cardiologist, Dr. Eddie Barron, has formulated the four M's. It's a simple plan to be able to help people have a healthy lifestyle. These are measurement, meals, move and mental approach. The first M is measurement. Measurement of your weight, cholesterol, sugar and blood pressure are increasingly important as you approach menopause. As we get older, it's more likely that we are to gain weight and this isn't caused by menopause, but it's actually caused by the slowing down of your metabolism. Menopause does, however, change the composition of your body and increases the fat mass in your body and reduces the lean mass. Keeping a track of your weight is important as an increase in your weight can make you more susceptible to insulin resistance and to diabetes. This can inflame the arteries and the vessels, making you more susceptible to atherosclerotic disease and it does increase your risk of strokes and heart attacks. Blood pressure is another measurement that it's important to keep a check on before and during menopause. We aim to keep blood pressure under 130 on 85. We try to manage weight and we try to eat a low salt diet to keep blood pressure under control. Having high blood pressure can damage your arteries by making them hard and less elastic and it actually makes your heart have to pump harder. The other important measurement to keep a track of is cholesterol. As I mentioned earlier, oestrogen can help the good cholesterol be higher and the bad cholesterol be lower. Once a woman's oestrogen withdraws after menopause, this protection goes, meaning it's important to keep an eye on what your different types of cholesterol are doing. If you develop high cholesterol and it's left untreated, you can develop fatty deposits which can make it difficult for the blood to flow through the arteries. Sometimes these deposits can burst suddenly and cause a heart attack or stroke. If you regularly measure these numbers and know what they are, you can make changes before any problems occur. Our next M is meals. It's important to eat intelligently and to take an interest in what foods you are eating. Stick to a varied healthy diet with fresh and seasonal produce as much as possible and watch your salt intake because that can help manage your blood pressure. Keep in mind how often you are eating foods containing unhealthy fats like saturated fats and trans fats. Saturated fat is in meat, full fat dairy and eggs. These foods are good for you in moderation so it's important to have some but just limit the amount. Foods high in trans fats include most commercially baked products and deep fried takeaway foods. The next is move. I mentioned that it's important to keep your weight under control, to reduce your blood pressure and build up your lean body mass. But what's the best way to do that? Movement. By moving at any age and any fitness level, you can keep active. Our last M is for mental approach. Many studies show your state of mind can protect as well as damage your heart health. Important risk factors that may lead to heart disease include stress, anger and depression. One of the things menopause plays havoc with are our moods, often causing low mood or depression. Finding ways to relieve your stress before you reach menopause will help you more easily navigate this time. Whether it's exercise, walking, meditation or spending time in nature, finding out what works for you before menopause will keep your mind healthy as well as your heart. That's great. So measurement, move, meals and mental approach, that's all something that we can do for ourselves to keep ourselves healthy. 
And just how important is it to check in with a GP? You're right, Nikki, it's so important to check in with our GPs. If you've changed GPs over the last few years, remember to share with them your medical history, including your obstetric history. Most people don't realise the importance of sharing your obstetric history with your GP. If you have had gestational diabetes, gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, or you've delivered a baby prematurely, you're at higher risk of developing heart disease. Your GP needs to know these things to be able to accurately predict your cardiovascular risk across your lifetime. For earlier identification of cardiovascular disease and more timely and appropriate medical intervention, it's advised for women over the age of 45 to have a heart health check, or if you're over the age of 30, if you're from an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander background. This enables proactive prevention to be used to reduce your risk. So Ashley, what does our annual heart health check comprise of? Yeah, well, this annual heart health check will depend on the individual, particularly what age they are and what other health conditions they have. But it would be a discussion with your GP about your risk factors and a check on your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your sugar and your weight. Ashley, thank you so much for taking the time to walk us through all that. No problem. So in summary, our recommendations are to take note of the signs and symptoms of a heart attack and know what to do in case they arise. Understand how experiencing menopause could impact your heart health and put a support plan in place by following the four M's approach in the lead up to menopause to minimise your risk. And please book an appointment with your GP. Take the time to run through your medical history and if you've had children, your obstetric history. If you're over the age of 45 or 30, if you're Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander background, please do get a heart health check. Our vision at Heart Research Australia is to keep families together for longer and we hope this video helps you stay heart healthy and well. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.